Uh, from wherever watching, uh, welcome. We are coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center. You're watching NTV. We are coming to you to discuss domesticating the fight against malaria in light of World Malaria Day today. I'll just give you a preamble before we dive into the discussion. Today is World Malaria Day, and of course, it's being marked and uh, uh, a wide range theme. No single tool we do understand is available today in the fight against malaria. That's according to the World Health Organization. As a result, the United Nations Agency is calling for investments and innovations that bring new vector control approaches, diagnostics, anti-malarial medicines, and other tools to speed the pace of progress against malaria. Despite the steady advances in lowering the global burden of malaria between 2000 and 2015, a progress has slowed or stalled in recent years, particularly in the high burden areas in sub-Saharan Africa. Urgent and concerted effort, they say, is needed to set the world back on a trajectory towards achieving the 2030 targets that were set by the World Health Organization Global Malaria Strategy. That is a grim trajectory. I'm Chris Higeni and welcome to this uh, special talk show where we shall be discussing the domestication of the fight against malaria. I'm joined by officials. First, on my very immediate left, I have uh, Dr. Jen Irene Nabakoza. She's uh, from uh, the Ministry of Health. Many thanks for joining us, Doctor. We also have uh, Florence Abego. Florence Abego is a village health team member. She will have uh, very uh, important information to share with us that is uh, community based. Many thanks for making it, uh, Madam Florence Abego. And uh, many thanks to you too, Dr. Mary Josephine Mbide, a Senior Technical Advisor, Malaria at the AIDS Support Organization. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you. As we get underway, I'll give each a minute to tell us exactly what your role is uh, so that we can understand exactly from what point of view you're working within the greater spectrum of interventions from uh, your organization, the Ministry of Health, and of course the communities. Let me begin with uh, Dr. Mary Josephine Mbide on my extreme left. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. And um, it's, it's a very big day for us, mm. um, domesticating the fight um, domesticating the malaria fight. So um, I, I work with uh, TASO yeah. and uh, TASO is currently implementing a number of interventions mm -hmm. in the districts, in the communities and um, our role is really to support the, we are working together with the Ministry of Health but also supporting the districts mm -hmm. and the communities to be able to, to fight malaria. So it's mainly support working with the districts and facilitating the districts to be able to, to implement a number of the activities mm. so that we can fight malaria. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Madam Florence Abego. Good evening, viewers. For me as a VHT, we always uh, mobilize and sensitize the community members on how to prevent malaria. Mm. And also tell them always sleep in a long lasting insecticide treated mosquito net to avoid that bite and also tell them to clear the bushes around their homes and and uh, holes with stagnant water and also tell them every evening to close the windows and doors to avoid mosquitoes to enter inside wow thank you dr nabakoza uh good afternoon viewers dr jen irene nabakoza is my name I work with the National Malaria Control Division. I am a pediatrician by training and a public health specialist. Uh, while at the National Malaria Control Division, I'm responsible for all interventions that work through uh, the use of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, chemicals uh, or medicines to prevent malaria. In other words, I'm responsible for the chemo prevention and chemo prophylaxis. Uh, things like the prevention of malaria in pregnancy. Mm. Right now we have the new tool of seasonal malaria chemo prevention. Um, we are also planning to have things like uh, the prevention of malaria in infants using medicine, commonly medicines commonly called uh, intermittent preventive treatment of malaria in infants. Mm. Uh, but these are going to first be studied. Um, um, I welcome all of you to celebrate this very important day, mm. World Malaria Day, That's right. as we join the rest of the world to com commemorate this very important day. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nabakoza. I uh, specifically ensured that uh, you introduce uh, the greater aspects of your role mm. uh, last because you are going to give us what I believe is the uh, comprehensive overview of where we are and uh, how the Malaria Day 2022 finds Uganda in terms of the various interventions that are being uh, uh, put across uh, the uh, areas of interest in uh, reducing the specter of uh, malaria. Where are we as a country right now? Um, allow me to start by mentioning that we've made very tremendous strides in terms of uh, reducing the burden uh, due to malaria. Yes, I know that globally uh, Uganda is the thirdest, uh, third contributor to the malaria uh, burden in terms of number of infections, in mm. terms of morbidity. And I also know that uh, we're the seventh contributor when it comes to the, to, the, to, the, uh, to the burden in terms of death. But locally, we've made tremendous strides. Mm. In uh, 2009, um, the prevalence of malaria stood at 42%. But uh, by 2014, 2015, the prevalence had dropped to 19%. Uh, to and as of 2018, 2019, the prevalence was at 9%. Mm -hmm. What that means in simple terms is that uh, every other time you find 100 people, you're likely to find only nine carrying malaria parasites. What that means is that uh, uh, chances of uh, the mosquito picking the parasites are, are progressively reducing. And uh, to me, that is uh, a very, very tremendous step. Uh, you'll also note that uh, um, if you look at uh, the, 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 the attendance at outpatient department, mm. uh, when you, whenever you meet about 100 people, about 20 to 30 of them will be coming because of malaria. Mm. Uh, what that means that these are people who are able to be treated and they go back home to do their treatment at home. And then every, uh, out of 100 people that are, are, are admitted, only 20 are admitted because of malaria. And currently about, uh, about, uh, about, uh, about 16 people die every day because of malaria, okay. which is a, a tremendous drop compared to what we were many years ago. Mm. That's a very positive picture, of course, uh, indicating that uh, there is a tremendous progress uh, that is being made in the fight against malaria. This year's theme, domesticating the fight against malaria, there is a slogan that has been adopted, prevent the bite. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know at a community level, many people have been uh, are told to use uh, nets. They've been told to ensure that stagnant water is eliminated and to do just about everything that is needed or within their capacity to ensure that uh, they mosquito that stays at bay. Mm. Before I go to uh, Madame Florence Abego, who will be of course taking us through what she does within mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. VHT, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Nabakoza, domesticating the malaria fight to some individuals out there might seem like all other interventions are either slowing or not doing the job that they are supposed to do. Hence, they need to pivot to a more grassroots approach. Is that so? Uh, to some extent, yes, because uh, as you may see, uh, as you may have noted that um, we've been doing a lot of interventions mm -hmm. in terms of uh, preventing um, uh, the, the interaction between the mosquito and the person um, by making sure that people receive and use mosquito nets. That's right. Uh, people um, are living uh, in habitable places that are not easily penetrated by the mosquito. Um, uh, reducing the mosquito population in terms of spraying for where we have high burden mm. and uh, going for the breeding places of mosquitoes. Uh, and the other intervention was that when one is sick, when one has parasites, that they are pr promptly tre treated for the following reasons. Mm. One, so that they don't transmit to the other people around them, but also uh, to make sure that they don't move to severe malaria and then eventually death. And then also making sure that people have information about what they are supposed to do. Mm. And then making sure that we know where we are at any one time so that we know how to uh, to do it. But this has basically been happening and uh, has been a responsibility of uh, mainly the Ministry of Health, our, our other stakeholders like the implementing partners and development partners, mm. the districts and, uh, and, uh, and the health workers. We realized that we were not involving the individuals. 
yeah. we're not involving the people that are affected by malaria. So, and we noted that this is probably the reason why we were slowing down mm. and why we were not getting to where we're supposed to be. And uh, this is the reason why we're now going lower down okay. to make sure that uh, it's individual responsibility to prevent um, the infection due to malaria mm -hmm. and to prevent the bite. Um, this is why we're talking about domest domest domesticating malaria. But also, uh, we, when it comes to, uh, to, 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 to funding, making sure resources are available, we want to locally uh, be able to identify resources that will support the interventions that we put in place. Mm -hmm. We want most of the funding to be uh, to be coming from within our own resources as a country because uh, there's evidence actually that countries that have eliminated malaria have been utilizing funds that are from within their local resources. Okay, yes. we shall want later in the program to hear how that uh, nexus plays out. Mm -hmm. Funds generated from uh, local persons. Uh, Madame Florence Abego, the domestication of the fight against malaria means the people the households, the communities are going to uh, play a greater role. These, as a village health team player, are the people you interact with on a daily basis. Take us through how this is rolling out and perhaps in light of uh, the new uh, strategy that is being adopted, is going to improve. Thank you. Mm. As a VHT, what we always do outside, outside there with the, my colleagues, yeah. We always go around. In fact, it is a door-to-door -door campaign. Mm. We go and tell them, in fact, teach them also how to, to hang the mosquito net. Okay. Yes, you demonstrate how to hang it. And also, we tell them, whenever you have a fever, mm. you test. Because uh, some people, they can even hurry to, to go and get the treatment and they begin with it. Mm -hmm. So we tell them to go and test and when they get the, the malaria there, we always tell them that to treat within 24 hours. 24 hours. Yes, as the doctor said that, it is better to fight it when it is a still mild one. Mm -hmm. That is our role as VHTs. And we also tell them always that uh, the, the mosquito which transmits uh, the, 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 the malaria, it also appears at around 10 to midnight. Mm. We always tell them uh, by that time every person must be inside the mosquito net. Okay. And more so the children who are managing uh, in the community. Mm. Yes, you, you, they bring those children to us, we, we test before give, giving any treatment. And when you get the malaria is there, you treat. Mm. And also tell the, the caretakers to follow the treatment in the time. Not again, you give. Uh, like today, then you become busy. You know, dealing with the community is not uh, easy. Mm. Some person can just easily go and drink and forget about to get giving the child <laughs> the treatment. So it okay. is our role. And then again, when they are treating that kid, to make sure they, as the kid uh, become okay, mm. we follow always to check and also advise when necessary. Okay. That is our role as VHTs. All right, so in this uh, particular strategy that is being adopted by uh, Minister of Health and other sector players, what is different? What have you been told? What are you going to receive in terms of uh, either funding to do a little bit more than you've been doing? Are you receiving trainings to do uh, some other interventions away from what you've been doing? We need to understand what is going to change in the new strategy for you. But as we work with the task, so we have been receiving trainings Mm. Whenever there is uh, any, 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 any something to, 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 to do with the health, they mm. always equip the, the VHTs. Okay. Yes, and we are always read, uh, prepared. Mm. And it, that is the, the task work. Okay. To make sure that we are prepared to handle and refer any case we found in the community. Mm. Yes. Give us an idea in the district that you are working, your team. How do you plan the rollout of each person? We, where are you going? How many people or households are you going to handle? How does that work out? Uh, it depends on your village. Mm. It's like uh, in a village you are supposed to be three VHTs. And within the, 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 that village of three VHTs, you, you, you divide 
if it is the largest, you divide according to the number of households in that uh, village. Mm. Yeah, that is how we always manage. Okay. Yes. All right. I shall be returning to you so that you can take us through the particular challenges mm. uh, that you face because I'm sure those challenges have informed the change of uh, strategy in uh, fighting malaria. Dr. Josephine, she spoke about the fact that uh, VHTs are receiving training from TASO in order to improve their craft and how these interventions are being uh, uh, rolled out. Could you take us through that and perhaps anything that we need to understand in as far as improving the way they do their work is concerned? Okay, um, thank you again. So the VHT is mainly managing malaria is, is mainly um, managing malaria in the community. Mm -hmm. So they will be doing testing and treating mm -hmm. of children in the community. That's right. So yes, the, the training, we usually have um, a comprehensive training when we have new VHTs, when you're moving into a new district, and then have these refresher trainings to ensure that we, they, we update them on new um, things that have come up regarding the work they are doing. Mm. But on top of that, to make sure that they are doing the work they are supposed to be doing, we, we also facilitate them to meet mm -hmm. with their supervisors at health facility level. Remember, they are at the community, mm. but they have a team they report to. They have supervisors they have at the facility level to ensure that they are doing what they're supposed to do in the community. Mm. And remember, they are helping the health system. They are helping what is already happening in the, at the health facility level. So if there is facilitation for mm. them to meet with their VHT supervisors on a quarterly basis mm. to be able to discuss the challenges that they have and also be able to replenish their stocks to be able to do the work in the field. Mm. The other thing is uh, we also facilitate coaching and mentorship for the mm. different VHTs so that um, at any one time they, they, we always have the district trainers and also their VHT supervisors to make sure that they are providing quality services, that they are reporting um, accurately because this is important for programming. Mm. And um, then we also provide support supervision. Uh, visits to them also still as a form of mentorship and mm -hmm. coaching mm -hmm. and this is done together with the national program and and the districts okay yes wow uh madame florence abego those uh, aspects that of course uh, uh, play well within uh, your ability to do the job and especially given the fact that uh, households can have a lot of challenges what are these particular challenges you face on a daily basis as you go out to either educate or help these uh, families and the greater communities be able to deal with malaria efficiently. Thank you. And those challenges are always there in the community. Mm. You cannot rule it out. Yeah. And there are people who can comply with what you have gone to do, and there are those ones who are resisting. Mm -hmm. And especially this program of uh, spraying the houses. Mm, in Soroti, most of them refused. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why? What was they, the they reason? They refused in their own reasons. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, as a, a VHT, you have to, 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 to be near that person, especially those ones who are, who are difficult to, 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 to be talked to. Mm. You, you really be near them and you try to create some friendship there. So, okay. next time when they refuse, you go back. The next time you go, they will allow you to do it. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for that uh, insight. Uh, Dr. Nabakoza, where do you see Uganda in the next 10 years, given the plethora of efforts that are being rolled out in fighting malaria? It remains the greatest killer in the country, so much so that when you bring the statistics we saw over the last two years as COVID claimed lives, malaria the, the other statistics don't even pale in comparison. How are we going to achieve the things that we need to achieve as a country in the next 10 years? Yeah, to start with, um, by 2030, mm -hmm. we want to see a malaria-free Uganda. Wow. But this is going to be stepwise. Mm -hmm. uh, by 2025, we're working towards making sure that uh, we have reduced uh, malaria infections and sickness due to malaria or malaria morbidity by 50% of the 2019 levels. 
um, and we want to have reduced uh, malaria deaths by 70 percent. Mm. That is uh, the starting point. And how do we want to do that? Um, the picture I gave earlier mm. is general for the country. Yeah. But if you look at different regions of Uganda, and uh, if you look at different uh, districts, you'll see that the picture is different. Mm. For example, if I can pull out a few, a few of the regions. Uh, please do, please do. Um, I gave you the picture of 9%. Um, uh, that is whenever I find 100 people, 9 will have malaria parasites. Mm. But this is different in Karamoja. In Karamoja, every other time you get 100 people, 34 of them will be carrying malaria parasites. Wow. Meaning that the mosquitoes in there have high chances of picking mal malaria parasites mm. and transmitting them to other people. Uh, when you go to Busoga, every other time you find 100 people, 20, 20, about 24 of them will be having malaria parasites. That is about 24% malaria mm. prevalence. And, uh, and West Nile, uh, every other time you find 100 people, about 21 to 22 will have malaria parasites. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, in Kampala, when you find 100 people, chances are less than one that they will be ca carrying malaria parasites. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you realize that the country has areas that have a, a low malaria burden. Mm -hmm. Then we have those that have uh, moderate to high. So for where we have law, we want to make sure that uh, we reduce the intensity of transmission lower and lower. And then for where we have moderate to high, we want to work so hard, want to make sure that uh, we sustain the gains, that we don't lose out on any gains that we get. Mm. If we reduce the test, uh, the, 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 the parasite prevalence or the, uh, the, 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 the transmission, we want to keep it there. Mm. We don't want to keep moving back and forth. And then we, we continue working towards making sure that uh, the transmission reduces lower and lower. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and by so doing, we believe that we shall reduce infection by the 50% we want, and uh, disease due to malaria by 50% mm. by 2025, okay. and then reduce, uh, reduce, uh, uh, reduce uh, the death due to malaria by 70%. Mm. And then we work towards keeping it there, and uh, we keep looking out for uh, ways of making sure that by 2030, no Ugandan has malaria. No Ugandan has malaria. Yes. Of course, that's something uh, we shall all be looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure every Ugandan has uh, the ability to cooperate and be part of uh, this initiative. Uh, Dr. Josephine Bide, you advise the AIDS support organization on malaria. There are aspects like uh, rapid urbanization, mm -hmm. mobile populations, mm -hmm. climate variability, non-immune groups among others that make it very challenging and uh, requires all of us to work together. From an expert point of view, how are you approaching this? Um, well, we, the main thing is I, I work definitely with the, the Ministry of Health. Ah, okay. All these are, um, issues that, that come up mm. are things we shall, we shall discuss with them as challenges. That's right. And they will guide us accordingly on what are some of those things that we need to do for these, um, for these, um, for these groups. For example, we have um, one of the districts we work in is Kamwenge. Mm. We also have Arua in West Nile. We have refugee population. Those are the mobile populations. Yeah. And um, we will make sure that we also extend the services that we are providing mm. in, in the other parts of the districts to those communities to ensure that they are also having access to these, uh, to both treatment and, uh, I mean, to both testing and, 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 and treatment. So even when working with um, um, the different centers, with, with other, other, our other stakeholders, we make sure that we, we we make sure that we integrate malaria mm. in the work we are doing okay. as well and um, manage and we pass on the messages, mm. we communicate with the, with the different stakeholders to make sure that we, we are managing malaria well mm. um, together with the Ministry of Health. Okay, and there is like a uh, okay. Dr. Yes, Dr. Mary supplement said on that. that uh, if you can allow me to make yeah, a supplement. Please do, please do. Uh, that they work with Ministry of Health. Mm. The question you ask is actually a very important question mm. because it is uh, one of, um, it comprises of the reasons that are actually likely to cause the loss to the gains we've achieved. Mm. Um, it's one of the reasons why we keep getting what you call epidemics and upsurges, the mobile populations, the non-immune populations, mm. um, people living in the urban setting. Um, these other 
the groups that are giving us challenges. So um, like Dr. Mary said that uh, we usually provide guidance as mm. Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a strategic document mm. that guides us on how and all our stakeholders on how to approach some of those issues. Like in that particular document, we have uh, a key intervention for the urban population. Okay. They have special arrangement. Mm. Then the non-immune populations, uh, we, have, uh, um, we, have, uh, we have special arrangement for them. Like especially if you know that they're moving from, uh, most of them are non-immune because they're living in places where malaria mm. endemicity is very low or malaria transmission is, or the burden of malaria it's is low. low. So exposure is uh, very minimal. They've not been exposed for a very long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the plan is that whenever they're moving from their, their usual area of residence mm. to area where endemicity is high, they should be given some medicine so that when they're there, they continue using other interventions like the, like the mosquito net, but mm. they have been given medicine before they move there. Oh, okay. Of course, we also have very special arrangement for the mobile populations. Mm. Um, Mary very, has very mentioned the, the refugees, mm. but we also have a setup like Karamoja, mm. where people by setup Keep they, moving. they keep moving yeah, those and are some of their mosquito some of these interventions that we have like the mosquito mm -hmm. nets cannot actually support them mm -hmm. effectively mm -hmm. you cannot uh, the kind of structures they use okay. you cannot do indoor residual spraying oh, okay. so we are trying to put in place interventions that can actually work for them like we're currently mm -hmm. giving the children under five right. some medicine to prevent malaria okay let's take a break of course uh, the discussion continues on uh, the domestication of the fight against malaria the slow is prevent the bite how are you doing whatever you're doing to be able to prevent that bite that uh, will cause uh, malaria and of course uh, you don't want to be part of the very grim statistics that sees 14 people on a daily basis in the Welcome back. We're glad uh, you're still with us and uh, you're watching a special talk show where we are discussing the domestication of the fight uh, against malaria and taking on a special slogan, Prevent the Bite, that is uh, part of uh, initiatives of World Malaria Day today. Of course, uh, we come on the backdrop of the fact that malaria continues to kill so many Ugandans and across Africa, the bigger picture is that Sub-Saharan Africa continues to provide the greater bulk of statistics in as far as uh, malaria death are concerned. And on uh, the show uh, this afternoon, we have uh, Dr. Irene, Jen Irene Nabakosa, uh, she is from the Ministry of Health, who is uh, giving us a comprehensive overview of uh, government efforts in uh, fighting uh, malaria. We also have uh, Florence Abego, a VHT, that is a village health team member, and those are the people that deal directly with uh, the communities at household level. Very insightful perspectives from her. You will, of course, uh, no doubt have to listen in. We also have uh, Dr. Mary Josephine Mbide, she's a technical advisor for malaria at Tasso and I'll go straight to Dr. Mary Josephine Mbide preventing the bite in the domestication of the fight against malaria. Yeah. I don't know much about what particular aspects the strategy intends to pinpoint. However, as the expert tell us, take us through how do we prevent the bite as the household, as the grassroots persons? Um, I think one of the things is for the grassroots person, for the household, for all of us, mm. even in our homes, yeah. to understand um, the consequences of that bite, mm. if that bite is to happen. So you're looking at the mother who is going to stay awake with mm. a child who is, uh, has a fever in the night or is having some kind of convulsion in the night or the person who has to cannot go to work mm. because they have been bitten and therefore infected and got malaria. And also a, a parent who has to deal with the fact that a child has to be out of school mm. because of malaria. So for me, the thing is, um, first of all, TASO really is, is supporting community system strengthening. Mm. So we work with our VHDs. We work, we are now going to start work with the community-based organizations to ensure that we move down to the households, to let them understand 
um, what is the what malaria really means to these homes. Uh -huh. Like I've told you, the mother who will stay awake at night, the yeah. child who won't go to school, the, that that individual in that home who will not go to work because of malaria, yeah. and therefore making them less productive. So the main thing is to to reach the household and tell them that hey, look here, this is your responsibility to fight to to ensure that we kick malaria out of our homes yeah. we kick malaria out of uganda so it's um the, the 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 main thing is for them to understand that from this bite it's going to lead to you getting infected you will get malaria these are the consequences and if we can um ensure that we take up the different um, interventions yeah. as well as the messages and we we practice mm -hmm. what we are we are we are we are taught mm -hmm. we should be able to to eventually prevent this bite okay. in terms of making sure that we are using the nets in terms of making sure we are closing windows on time okay. in time in terms of making sure that if we have other people in the home who have malaria we are making sure that we are seeking uh, or have a fever for that matter we, mm -hmm. we, we seek attention from our health worker like sure. down in the community or at the health facility mm. so that we we avoid infection to others within the home okay yes uh, commemorating uh, world malaria day today is uh, a universal call to action mm -hmm. for political leaders mm -hmm. and uh, those within government mm -hmm. to renew the commitment mm. uh, to allocate funds in the fight against malaria mm. how do we scale up innovations in the deployment of new tools in fighting the disease I, I think um, that, so I think uh, Minister of Health is uh, on mm -hmm. top of that. Yeah. How do we scale up the innovations uh, on top of taking the fight to the household, the household level? What innovative tools are being adopted? For example, I've heard about the uh, random testing, uh, malaria. Yeah, Apart from that, what else is enabling the fight? I think yeah. probably before Jen comes in, okay. and, and uh, mainly at the community level, mm. we know that they are what they call mosquito repellent plants. Mosquito? Repellent uh -huh. plants. Yeah. So one of the things, and, and I think this has been happening in some communities, and they will tell you that we don't really have mosquitoes, okay. apart from the other uh, clearing the bushes, mm. making sure there is no stagnant water, but you will hear for some homes, they will tell you these are not there. Ah. So that's, that's an innovation, that okay. is something, again, we are working with the ministry yeah. to see how we can encourage homes mm. to start growing such plants okay before dr homes. before dr nabakoza comes in with the political commitment the renewal of political mm. commitment uh, to bring up about new innovations yeah. the village health teams i'm sure understand and interface with this on a daily basis are there specific plants flowers that uh, people can have within their compounds for example to stave off the attacks uh, from mosquitoes in, in order to prevent the bite? Mm, I think there is one which uh, they talked about, the lemongrass. A lemongrass. Yes, but that oh. is the only one I saw. <laughs> lemongrass but, all uh, along. But yesterday, from Nambole, I saw mm. a certain car carrying mm. those plants. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're yeah. seedlings. Okay. And uh, the, the bad part of it, the rains interrupted so, so much. Mm. So we couldn't really go near. Okay, to understand exactly. To what understand type of the, uh, exactly. And as me as a VHT, mm. I was willing to, to buy one. Okay. Yes. In the communities, you, the people you interact with, don't they speak about the things? Me, I, I will tell, I will give you my personal experience. I am not comfortable with uh, taking tabs. You know, just me a panado alone makes me freak out a little bit. Though you could find a younger girl who simply crushes it, and uh, well, it's really funny. And then I resort to, for example, using uh, a herb or uh, a leaf that is grown. There is a sour leaf. I don't. I will be very honest. I forget its name in English. It's mm. really very, very sour. Mm. In the local language, mm. it is called. Uh, is it Mololoza? Something like that. Mm. I find it comfortable to drink that than actually and the uh, drop it. And you panadol. take it as a single dose. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now that's where the problem is. Isn't that working in the communities you're interacting with? I think those things are now disappearing. But oh. uh, I remember very well when I was a young girl. Mm. My mother used to treat me with it. Okay. You take just a single dose, they'll just uproot it and wash it, uh -huh. crush it, then they will uh, 
soak it with the hot water. Hot water. And, yeah, and they will put that. a half a half a mug. Half a mug. Yeah, then okay. you take you take once. You take once and yes, yeah. and the, the other you thing. You sweat it out and your fever yeah. goes. Okay. And it become okay. All right, Minister of Health, mm. are you kind of do you find ways where you can integrate such interventions into the tools that are being used to administer medicines yeah um yes uh we are uh, actually the way we do it mm. we do not discard those ideas okay. they are great ideas yeah because we clearly know that even the medicines we use originate from the very herbs, the herbs. And, uh, the so um one of the things we're taking on as minister of health and national malaria control division is uh, exploring the effectiveness of the repellent the repellent plants mm. normally when they, before we take off we take on any tool we start by uh, doing research around it mm. to understand its effectiveness okay. to understand uh, the, 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 the the possibility of using it mm. to understand the the cost effectiveness to understand whether communities will accept mm. whatever we're putting in place so repellents is one of the things we are studying mm. the other that we have introduced uh, in that regard mm. is the paint the, 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 paint. the paint the paint paint the okay. the, the paint mm -hmm. the paint contains insecticides paint okay. paint yes. for the one we use uh, on yes. a daily basis for yes. uh, beautifying <laughs> our walls <laughs> yes okay so that is something else we are trying to explore mm -hmm. um of course the other we are promoting um, still speaking to individual responsibility mm. is um, uh, is making sure that uh, someone understands that whenever I'm out mm. in the evening in the I should evening. put on long clothes yeah. um, uh. um, and cover my legs wow. cover my hands then the other is uh, the other that we're trying to see is uh, of course use of other repellents that mm. are available uh, the other we're exploring is uh, is um, making sure that uh, these mosquito nets that we give out every three years mm. when they are old instead of them being uh, used for <laughs> fishing um <laughs> people use the same mosquito Trust nets Ugandans to cover too. creeves in the houses uh, you know most people's walls are incomplete i see some use uh, yeah. using them in the gardens to guard tomatoes from yeah and chicken. Yeah, the yeah, best and way would be you use them as best. curtains in mm. the walls mm. if you can't put if screens can. in the windows of your house you yeah. use them as cu cu mm. as curtains or you use them to cover the cr the creeves in the houses mm. uh but then also there are other tools you asked me earlier yeah some of those new tools we are introducing as Uganda. Mm. There are quite a number of tools we're bringing on board. Um, one of them is uh, the malaria vaccine. Mm. You've had uh, a lot of talk around the malaria vaccine. Sure. Um, uh, fortunately, um, WHO has given countries a go ahead to use the malaria vaccine. Mm. And as a country, we are in uh, preparations to adopt this new tool. Um, one of the challenges that we may face is that the, the, the doses are not so many, so countries have been told to, uh, to, to do it in a phased manner. Mm -hmm. And we already have a plan of how we're going to do it in a, fa a phased manner. We always seem to be at the wrong end of vaccine uh, reception. Uh, we have to wait on uh, things. It's something that uh, I'm sure the government should be able to rectify. Um, we've had a lot of experience mm. with the COVID vaccine, mm. and uh, I think we've learned a, lo a lot of lessons, mm. and this has actually strengthened us. Mm. I believe even with the COVID vaccine, we're doing very well, okay. and uh, we're using that as a stepping stone to effectively take up the malaria vaccine. Uh, the other tool we are bringing on board is the use of uh, medicines to prevent malaria in the vulnerable groups that mm. uh, cannot actually u effectively use uh, use the available interventions. Mm. You're going to uh, you must have had something called about called seasonal malaria chemo prevention. We are doing this in Karamoja mm. for the children under five. Okay. Um, we um, we are scaling up indoor residual spraying. Mm. We are doing it in Very some can countries mm. of. Uh, book uh, we're, we're doing it in the districts of uh, of um, of uh, of teso bukedi lango and acholi now we're moving to the west nile
Mm. Um, and uh, as we're doing this, we are actually uh, strengthening surveillance. Mm. Surveillance means you're monitoring with action. Okay. You're looking out for your numbers. Mm. Are your numbers going up? Are they increasing if they're if they if they increasing or if they're mm. dropping? How do you keep that drop? Mm. If they're increasing, why are they increasing? Okay. And what must you do? You jump in time, you mm. go in in time and, uh, and respond accordingly. All right. Uh, thank so you very much. These um, are some of the new tools. New tools. You and the political will, of course, I think is And there. of course, the individual no, no. responsibility mm -hmm. is something that is very, very key. Right. And then government commitment mm. to uh, increase Dr. funding. Dr. To Dr. Josephine Mbite, your parting shots uh, very quickly, 30 seconds. Um, the fight starts with us. Mm. It's an individual thing. There have been a number of interventions. Mm. Um, they, you can hear the new tools, tools that are coming on board. That's right. But at the end of the day, it starts with us mm -hmm. in, our homes, in our homes for us to be able to kick it out of our homes and out of our country. All right. Madame Florence Abego. Yes, please. And I think to me, uh, as we have been uh, treating only the children, even the adults come, mm. that why not as testers also? Okay. Yes, and that is something new. They really want to be tested and get treatment at the home. Mm. And I think uh, with the time, the, the, the Minister of Health should think of that. Okay. As they say, taking services nearer to the people. They really prefer to get that uh, service in, uh, within, the community. within the community. And uh, during even uh, the, the time of uh, COVID-19 vaccines, mm. some people will get, but they will just say that, why didn't they come again here? Okay. When they are told that got the health uh, uh, Dr. facility. Dr. Nabakoza, very briefly. A malaria-free Uganda is very possible. Mm. Um, we, need, uh, we need to change our global picture. Mm. Because um, um, in, if we are to um, attain a middle income status, okay. uh, people need to understand that Uganda is malaria free. It's very possible. The responsibility starts with us. Mm -hmm. Everyone is on board. Parliament has committed. Mm. The president has committed. Uh, oh, so right. malaria is on the way to getting dom domesticated, domesticated at all levels. At all, levels. all I call and upon uh, people to do is uh, individual, individual responsibility. responsibility. Know what you're supposed to do. Government is doing its bit. Let's do our part. Dr. Jane Irene Nabakoza from the Ministry of Health, thank you for that insight. Uh, thank you to uh, Florence Abego, a village health team player. And uh, thank you to Dr. Mary Josephine Mbide, technical advisor, malaria at the AIDS support organization. The ladies have said it all. And of course, uh, we do believe you've taken note of uh, what you need to do to prevent the bite. The theme for this year's uh, commemoration of World Malaria day is domesticating the fight against malaria meaning you as an individual in the households wherever you are you are very critical in the fight against malaria that's it for this uh, particular program it's been a pleasure having your company do stay with us i'm chris higeni ntv 